Hello everyone and welcome to the next lesson in the SNAP course. So today we'll be finishing up the animation project and let's get started. It's going to be a really short lesson because of that. Okay, so for today we're planning on finishing the animation project and also adding in some extensions like music, loops, and some interactiveness. So what interactiveness means? is that we're gonna have the user actually maybe interact or do something with the program. So for example, we could use the ask and wait block where the user could put something into the program by typing, or for example, pressing space to go to the next scene. So it could almost be like a comic book where each every time like the user presses the space bar, it moves on to the next uh, screen or scene. Okay, so let's review the ask and wait block. So the ask and wait block is a block that is used for user input. So you ask a question and then you wait for the user to input an answer. And this input is actually a text input. So as you can see in the image, the user will type something into that text box and then they can click enter or click on that check mark and that will store that answer into the answer reporter. So you can see that small circular block or mm, elliptical block, it reports the answer that is inputted by the user. So you can use the above two blocks to get user input and then also use that user input in other blocks. Okay, so now let's talk about mouse and key input. So we use the sensing blocks for a lot of the sensing where the what key is pressed or what mouse or where the mouse is or whether the mouse is pressed and we can also use control blocks to do pieces of code when this input happens so for example the mouse x and mouse y reporters report the x and y components of the mouse's position so if you remember we talked about the coordinate plane earlier this would represent the x and the y position of the mouse. Remember that the higher the x, the more to the right it is, and the higher the y, the more up the mouse is. Then we also have the mouse down block. This is a boolean for whether the mouse is clicked or if it's not clicked. So if the mouse is pressed down, then this will say true, and if the mouse is not, it'll say false. We also have the key pressed reporter, which reports whether a certain key is pressed. So in this example, we have space, but as you can see on the right, it can basically handle every key on your keyboard, from numbers to letters to arrow keys, and even the plus and minus keys. So you can use this block to actually tell you whether a certain key is pressed in a boolean. So it'll be true or false depending on whether the key is pressed. We can also use this control block rather than the predicate block because we want to execute code at a certain point. So we, might, we can either do when and then we can use the predicate. So there's also that other control block or you could use this when key pressed block which basically has the predicate built into it. It basically has this blue block built into it. So when space key pressed, a certain piece of code will execute. Okay, so that was pretty short, but let's try experimenting with this. So rather than making, on, making it so that the ch a stage changes whenever it receives a message, change it so that the stage will only change when the space key is pressed or the mouse is clicked. So either of those. Okay, so after you've taken some time to try that experiment, uh, let's practice by working on and finishing up the animation project. Okay, so here's our goals. Today we're trying to finish the animation project. So let's go over some of the requirements that we might want. Let's have at least four sprites and five stages. This requirement you probably already meet because we already did that at the beginning of the project. 
You must also have motion blocks for all sprites. You might have already met this requirement when we went over the motion blocks. You also need to have say blocks for all sprites. You might have finished this in the last lesson after we talked about using control blocks to broadcast messages so sprites can have almost conversations. Finally, you need to have control blocks to control everything. And this requirement you should also have all done already. Okay, so let's also talk about some of the challenges. So some challenges that you might want to include if you have some extra time, which you hopefully will, is adding in music. So we talked about this last time. You can go to the sound section and use those blocks to create some music. We also have loops. So you can try using loops. So for example, your while loop, which is the while block or the repeat block or the for block, all of those are loops. You can also try using interactiveness. So specifically the ask and wait block or what we talked about today using these sensing blocks. Finally, you can uh, implement placing, pressing space to go to the next scene. So we already did this in the experiment, but you can add this or try adding this to your actual animation project. Okay, so that was really short, but that's all we have for today. So spend the rest of the time working on your animation project and finishing that up. And yeah, basically that's it for today. So we'll see you in the next lesson. And thank you.